For this Friday the 13th, Uncensored Horror sits down with stage and film actress Melanie Kinneman. We cover everything from General Hospital to the best of the best, as well as discuss her iconic Scream Queen role as the final girl Pam from Friday the 13th Part 5. What's up, Pam? Girl, you better hide your axes and machetes. This is going to be a scream, honey. Oh, where you going? We ain't that bad. Okay. Bye, girl. That's right, Uncensored Horror Viewers, friends of Uncensored Radio. Welcome to a very special episode where we are lucky enough to sit down with the one and only Ms. Melody Kinnaman. Hi, Melody. How are you today or this evening? Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Happy Friday the 13th. All that. (laughs) It's It's all coming up. Australia. So nice to be in Australia. (laughs) I know. Well, we are international, so you'll be, you'll be in America too. You'll yeah. be across time zones. It's it's nice to be popular, isn't it? <laughs> I hope so. I hope I'm popular. I hope so. I'm, I'm sure you are. I'm sure you know that. But we are so, so grateful for you to come on today. Um, we just want to, yeah, really, really thank you for taking the time out of your day. What's what's going on with you at the moment? Where are you, Whereabouts in the world are you? What's happening in your life? I'm in Los Angeles, California. It's pouring rain, which is different for us because it's always sunny. Right. So I'm enjoying a very gloomy week of rain, torrential rain. And uh, what else? Um, I'm getting ready to work on a new project. I'm doing a, a six hour mini series for Paramount, which oh, is. Oh, wow. It's produced. You're getting the QT on this. It's being produced <gasps> by Kevin Costner. And Morgan Freeman, it's directed by Roland Joffe, and I have a really nice supporting role in this. I have, I'm, I'm part of the twist of the plot, so I'm thrilled we start shooting in April in Bucharest. Oh, that wow. Cool. That, that's Which that's is so great. Funny I... because it, it's, it's actually supposed to take place as a Civil War drama. It's about three oh, women cool. who were spies for the abolitionists. I can't give you too much of the story, but it's supposed to take place in Richmond, Virginia, which is the South in America, but we're shooting it yeah. in Bucharest, uh, Romania. Go figure. <laughs> oh, well, you got to oh, go no. where the dollar's the best, right? Gotta <laughs> you got to go where you're going to go. I think it's cheaper there, and, but, but I would much prefer to work in America, by the way. By the way, but hey, look, if they if they if the pay's right, you gotta go, right? You gotta that's a that's a hefty, exciting project. That's very exciting. It's only taken me 40 years (laughs) this in this position, this kind of role. I mean, think about it. I've been at this over 40 years of my life. I started out very young, and now I'm not very young, but I got (laughs) this role 40 years later, and I'm playing. A character twenty years younger than I am. So ah, there you go. <laughs> but the good thing about it is it takes place in 1865. So the women I'm playing a 45 year old, but 45 years old in 1865 look different yeah. than right now. Yeah, <laughs> right. that's good exactly. enough for back then, actually, to make it to 45. So I, so I get a pack. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Well, we are we're going to talk about your whole career. Actually, we're going to go right back to the beginning. Ah. Small town. Were you a small town girl? Fair enough to say to start yes. off with. Yes. Small town, born and yes. bred. Small town, very small town, but close enough to New York City where I had the acting bug. And yeah, I, I was about I was to say that. Young. Yeah. Did you do like so, a lot of training when you were young, Melanie? A lot like of in training. school, high school. A lot of training. I started dancing at age four because I had a natural ability to do it, and I bugged my parents, can I please go? And they started me at age four. And I, I studied all the way through until I moved to New York at 18. So I can relate. I, I'm a former dancer. I, I teach oh, okay. dance now, so oh, okay. I, I, I can, I can relate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's so you it's still in the body. It, I do. It, I think it's really important. It stays that, with you forever. That, you have exactly. to be doing it to feel like yourself, right? Right. And I was going to mention that, like through lockdown, you, you got on, on social oh. media and had a bit of a dance and stuff like that. All Do you think time. that was important for mental health and yes, getting absolutely. through that person? Mental health, physical health. Yes, it really helped me mentally. You know that. 
And, yeah. uh, and I continue to do it for those reasons because, you know, life is difficult. Show business is extremely evil. So to keep your <laughs> mental health, you must work any kind of workout. I tell people, do anything, whatever makes you happy. For me, it's dance. For others, it's whatever whatever gets you through. Whatever pushes your buttons, really. Yeah, but keep it going because it'll help you throughout yeah. your whole life. Exactly. And it's funny that people, I find that I have a lot of students that they get to their early or early 20s, late teenage years and they drop off and they go, oh, no, you know, life takes over. But I've had a lot of them come back recently when they get a little bit older. So into that mid 20s, like, I've, right. I miss this. I, I miss doing this. It's like, that's right. Well, I'm missing see. Liam or something that, you know, is still there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I teach sometimes on my downtime and I, I find that so enjoyable to teach other people and it, it, you learn from teaching, don't you? Don't you learn? Oh, definitely. Things that you didn't, you get, you get better. I think you get better yeah. at. Of course. So how were your dance teachers back in the day? I know that we have a lot of um, politically correct ways of teaching now. How were your dance teachers back in the day? Did you have some, some nightmare moments? <laughs> Yes. Oh, you were really you lucky. Nice, very nice and very supportive. I had one ballet teacher that was old and crazy. And she used to walk around <laughs> with a stick. And she would hit us with the stick if our feet weren't in the right position or you're not nodding. So you, you've been through this. And she would just walk through us with <laughs> doing our work and just hit you in the calf or the foot. And, you know, you're like 10 years old. They're beating you with a stick, but you have to really have a love for dance to put up with that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. Do you think it, I did always it say help, that, Did it make mm -hmm. your technique better being hit with the stick? It made you concentrate and, and try to be better. You were driven because you didn't want to get hit with that stick. <laughs> I don't teach that. I always yeah. say... I always say the um the girls the the controversy around dance mums was very interesting when that was when that show was in its prime. They're like, oh, it's so damaging for children. I'm like, oh, she's yeah. really only yelling at like I know psych psychologically. Yeah, she's probably yeah. done a number on those girls, but Nobody I've heard some horror stories. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh. hey, they all got careers out of it. That's they it. did. They That's did. It. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, like so that it was helps you. Or later on of in course. life, because you get hit by everything in life. That's so it. I'm ready. I always try and tell people adversity builds character. You That's know, it. you've got to helps you helps you get coping mechanisms, and every no helps you. Although every no hurts, and mm -hmm. no matter where you are in your career, every no is a bit of a oh, oh you got to be strong to keep copping those no's. It That's helps it. you build to something else, to where you're Doesn't supposed it. to be. Doesn't it? <laughs> it yeah. does. So I'm ready. So was Broadway show. always the dream for you, Melody? Was, was it again. always Broadway? Was Broadway always Broadway the focus for you? Broadway was my goal. And I would go to New York. I did a lot of off-Broadway stuff. My sister worked on Broadway all the time as a dancer. My older sister. She was also a dancer, still is. And she worked a lot on Broadway. So that was my foray. I would go and watch her when I was 10, 11, 12 years old and sit backstage. So... So, yes, that was my life. I wanted to be a live theater actress. And I did get to do that, um, not dancing. I acted live theater in New York, and that's my big thrill. So um, that's how it started for me. And then I started getting yeah. musical uh, commercials. I danced to Dr. Pepper. It was a, a big <laughs> musical. I was going production. to ask, Melanie, are any of those commercials floating around YouTube that you were aware of? Yes, my... My, I posted it a few times. I'll put it up again for you in the future if you'd like. Oh, the please Dr. do. One, the Dr. Pe I'll put it up um, on my page. The Dr. Pepper one was a big, we won awards. It was a big deal. And then I did silly ones. Like I did one for Arid Extra Dry Deodorant where I'm dancing. I did one for Linoleum. And I was dancing on a spinning piano, tap dancing. So I got to do all of that stuff, all shot in New York because they were into the musical stuff. Now yeah. all that stuff doesn't happen anymore for some no. reason. No. So I got to do it luckily in the 70s in, in its prime. And I got cast yeah. in all that stuff. And that got me rolling in my career. Exactly. You never know what your skill set, no matter how niche you think it is. And a lot of people think that dance is 
isn't a career. And even even to this day, I have this argument with with parents of um, or, mm-hmm. not argument conversation. They're mm-hmm. like, "Well, dance isn't a career." I'm like, "But it can be. It can oh, it can yeah. lead you into all of these different things." And I'm sure even in your acting work, you use your movement. Like it's so essential. Every I, yeah. actor, every actor out there has studied dance, and they will tell you that whether they're good at it or not, they've studied dance. <laughs> Because you need the movement for acting. Definitely. And especially when it comes to, we'll talk about um, Friday the 13th a little bit later, when it comes to learning choreographed, I need to be here for this and, and taking those cues. I think muscle memory for dancers, I when I've been on set with dancers, they seem to get it quicker than just people that haven't, you know, that are used to line here, that's my mark. It's like, Absolutely. yeah, my muscle well, memory picks like it up. It's a skill that, um, like, dancers, people who do martial arts, like, you're re- very conscious of what your body is doing, and that helps transfer and through the camera. Everything. Everything you do. Yes. <laughs> so what was the move to from your small town to New York like for you? Well, like, especially in the well, 70s, I- that would have Ooh. been... That would have been interesting, right? And I was 18. I always <gasps> lived in New York, so I was prepared. I graduated from high school and left the small town, went to college in New York City, which was my foray, my reason to be there and get into acting. So I told my parents I was going to go to college. I didn't finish because I started getting successful right away. So I left college and got these great roles and made money and I said, this is my career, so I'm going to move forward. But it was it was um, exciting. It was difficult. It was all those things. Anybody who goes anywhere new, that you know, any town that they're not from. Even when I left New York and came to Los Angeles, that was a big move for me, too. It was very what difficult. was yeah. the um, – what led into that? What, what made you decide to make the move across the country to, to L.A.? I felt that I had done everything I could do in New York City um, for my career. And there wasn't a lot of film production in the 80s in New York. So, and I had done everything I thought I could do in New York that I was being offered, really, technically. Um, So I decided to make the move. I did it very quickly. I didn't know anybody here in LA. I just said, I'm going. I made the plan. I got here. I didn't, I I had, had to get a car, you know, all that stuff, an apartment and a car. I did it all within a week or two. And then I started oh looking for agents and I got a great agent and it went from there. I got General Hospital, which was supposed to be, I think, a month or two gig. And I was on for six months. And That's um, awesome. Was yes. it, what, like, I wanted to ask you about shooting soaps. Like, was that mm-hmm. schedule very hectic? Like, you had to be there, you know, oh, 18 yeah. hours of the day almost? 18 hours. You never saw the light of day. And it was, you had to memorize it constantly, tons of pages. And then they'd change the pages, the the dialogue, just before you went up to do the scene. So you had to be, it was great (laughs) because your memory had to be there. You know, you had to be, you had to be able to turn on a dime and change what you were doing. Um, So that was great training. But yes, hectic. You have no life. You go home and sleep. You get up the next day at the crack of dawn. You go to the studio. Um, and start it all over again. Yeah. But it's a lot of, you get to act all the time. You yeah. meet great people, other actors, and you make a lot of money, but you have no life. <laughs> but it, it, it proves, like, like we're just talking about, moving you know, from your hometown, being the big fish in a small pond. You went to New York City, which is, hello, that's the dream hello. for so many people. And then you're like, okay, where to next? It's that sense of not being comfortable, probably, especially, did you know any, anyone in LA when you moved there? I didn't know anyone. I had one contact and I yeah. did contact her and she let me stay in her apartment for a week. But she gave me an ultimatum. She said, you have one week. So I knew in that week I had to get a car and an apartment and a job. Oh, and she was brutal, it. but probably not, you were the girl for the task. She's a well-known soap <laughs> actress, so I'm not going to say who she is. But she was nice <laughs> and to have that place for a week. And I was grateful. But and that, motivated- that would have prepared you for life in L.A., right? Yes, it motivated <laughs> That's how me life moves. Do, yeah, do get it all done in a week. And I did. So 
you you have to be motivated, and then things roll yeah. from the top better. And it proves how much you want you want the career when you're willing to to really throw yourself into the the mouth of the beast and go. Oh, I'm and here. In that space gonna of being me up or spit me out. You have to be in show business, any career, forget anything. You have to be driven to do it because there are so many obstacles and so many roadblocks and, and you can't, a lot of people quit. The people that don't yeah. quit are the people that have um, an intense love for it and you're yeah. driven and you may be a little well, crazy. You're, with the you're a testament to that though, Melanie, you were just saying before, like 40 years later, you got this massive yes. project that you're going to work on. 40 freaking years. <laughs> yes. Is and that going to be your new tagline? 40 yes. freaking years. And I'm still here <laughs> in spite of everything. Yeah. Well, we have touched on it. So let's talk about General Hospital. Now, this was prime time like soap operas were the thing back yeah. back when you were on them so how was it stepping because general hospital even then would have been a beast of a show to to walk into with an yeah. established cast of people that everyone knew well steve even you and how i was know that? general hospital and we yeah. probably yeah. never and watched an episode right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, i know it the 80s it was the luke and laura uh yeah uh, epic <laughs> time their wedding I, I, so i was in after all of that right after all of it so luke and laura were the thing and the cassadines and scorpio and i was in the storyline of the cassadines and scorpio and i was a german spy i got killed <gasps> they, threw, they threw me in a freezer so i was a human popsicle yeah. oh wow see the writing is just, I I actually really, I know General Hospital because my grandmother was a soap addict and okay. she, even though General General Hospital didn't air, it aired at like some mm -hmm. bizarre hour of the morning here, like 4 a.m., and mm -hmm. but it'd be, it'd be like five episodes back to back until the morning TV came on, she would watch, she watched Days of Our Lives, Young and the Restless and General Hospital religiously so the, the luke and laura the cassadines i'm like oh this you i'm remembering this i'm remembering this I, I know this but how how did you find working in that environment with the people that had done it day in day out for years were they welcoming to you on the they set or did you just have to really yeah no they were welcome the director wasn't so nice but the, the cast was welcoming <laughs> the 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 staff the makeup hair costume everybody was welcoming they want you to do well and they had been there forever so you know um and it took me not long to kind of acclimate and be just one of the family you know i mean it was during the time rick springfield was there come on rick springfield yeah was the room and i was like wow yeah <laughs> that's was, amazing Hollywood. yeah <laughs> that yeah, that is well and truly a slap in the face. You turn around and one day there's Luke and Rick Laura and Rick Springfield. Oh, Hello. <laughs> yeah, I had no scenes with them before. I just kept looking at Some, him in the dressing room. Something to look at, you know. It's always and after that. I, after that, I got one of my favorite shows, which was Hill Street Blues. I was I was about to mention Hill Street Blues. Yeah, yeah that was a big <laughs> deal for me because I really loved that 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 great writing great actors um and i came from new york and a lot of those people came from new york and working with them was like being in a broadway show really yeah it's good when you find your especially with a show or something that you have had a lot of appreciation for you have that out of body experience to go oh. i'm here oh okay i'm here oh wait and i've really got to focus i'm here <laughs> it's like and they all were so welcoming there was no um backstabbing, uh, you know, any kind of periphery drama. It was just great actors wanting to get together to make the best project. It was such a great set. Great I want to say, though, that they're probably everyone was working so hard, there was no time for any drama off camera, right? Right, and they were so happy with, with their show and the position they were in and their good fortune to be on a great show. 
Uh, I, I experienced that the second time only. I've been on a bunch of stuff, but the second time I experienced that was on Cheers. And we were about to ask you about Cheers as well. <laughs> Very So that would have been the monster hit. That was the friends was of its it. time back in the day. That you know what I mean? It. That was. For me, yeah. that was it. When I got cast in that, I was thrilled. It was, again, with one of the greatest casts, great director. Um, and it wasn't just a one-shot thing. Hill Street, I was only on a, a couple of days. This was all week. We rehearsed yeah. all week. Like you're rehearsing for a big play, you know, show, big play. And then the final, we rehearsed Monday through Friday. Then Friday, it's in front of a live audience. So they come into the studio. Yeah. We shot at Paramount. So they come into the studio. We're in front of a live audience, three camera comedy setup. It was unbelievable. I've never experienced that. And to work with these people, everybody, everybody was top of their game, the nicest. Uh, Woody Harrelson was a creep. I'll give you that. And um, Ted Danson wasn't nice. But everybody else, they were like <laughs> my best friend. They, they, they so took Kirsty me. was lovely. Hmm? Kirsty was lovely. Lovely to me. Very sweet. Uh, uh, Bibi Newworth was oh. so She was a Broadway dancer. She was the yeah. nicest to me. We bonded. Kirsty was lovely. Um, everybody, John Ratzenberger, um, God, Kelsey Grammer was wonderful to me. They treat you like they're your best friend during the time that you're shooting, you know, the whole week you're there. So, yeah. And did you think working in front of a live audience helped you as well from the theater days? Because yes. it's such a different yes. beast, such a different beast working on especially soap television where there is no time to really react and think about your performance. You've got to get the scenes done. Whereas when you're recording a sitcom, you can actually, you know, gauge the audience's response and wait and all that kind of stuff. You get the response from the live audience. You know, you really want that as a, as a live theater actor and you don't get that on television, but this, you know, the live audience. Yeah. Um, sitcoms <laughs> is the best. It, it would have been, um, I can't even amaze, imagine walking onto that set and going, oh, this is cheers. Okay, amazing. Okay. The first day of rehearsal, just walking in and seeing all these people that I had admired for so long. And then Kirsty was like the first one. No, Woody Harrelson was, and he was kind of creepy, but he was nice. But Kirsty walked in and she said, um, she wanted, she, the director, Jim Burroughs, she said, Jim, I have a problem. You have a new actress on the set. And I was like, hmm. She said, um, my problem with her is that she's too pretty and too thin, so I want her out. <laughs> oh, no. We were like, oh, wait. No. No, she, just, she, laughed she was obviously she joking. And she broke the ice and I relaxed. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. God love. God rest your soul, Kirsty. But oh, no. it's so sad to hear of her passing. But, yeah. you know, this is this is – television this is life isn't it you just go one minute you're here and you're the next you're and then, the biggest yeah. thing and then like that so you've got to make your mark yeah. and we're going to talk about a big mark that you made especially for a horror franchise ladies and gentlemen we are going to talk about it we're going to talk about your time i guess near crystal lake in friday the 13th part five a new beginning now i have to always ask this because we have spoken to a couple of other franchise actresses um had you seen these movies before you auditioned no i had never seen the <laughs> Friday 13th. i didn't know what it was i didn't which is probably good because when i went into right. that, it didn't affect me after i got the role yeah. I was cast pretty fast. After I got the role, I said, I need to see part four because I need yep. to know, you know, the backstory and what's going on and wh what's expected of me and what, what's the whole thing. So they gave, they brought me in and showed me part four. And that helped a lot. But and were you a fan of horror movies? Yeah. When were you a fan of horror movies? Yeah. movies? <laughs> no, I, I, I don't like horror movies. They scare me. I think they're wonderful. I, I particularly like, for me, a horror film, which really technically is not considered, is The Exorcist. It's my favorite yes. movie. It's the scariest. I do like all the Hitchcock stuff, but I don't mm. like present day horror. 
So I'm not a big horror movie fan. I think it's too violent. I think it's too graphic. All of that stuff. Did you have a Did you have a moment of going, "Oh, okay," after watching after watching part four and going, "This is going to be a ride." What What, what have I got myself what? into? Yes, but I was thrilled. You have to understand, I was still young and it's a movie. Yeah, yeah. It was a lead in a film. It was a lead yeah. in a Paramount Pictures film, so uh, it was a big deal. And, uh, and again, goal, the height of this franchise too. Yes. And my goal was mm. to do the best job I could do to create the most interesting character I could create given the, the, the restraints, given the script and the storyline. I just wanted to make Pam Roberts interesting in the whole story because I do know they cut a lot of my scenes out that were kind of developing who she was. I know it was about yeah. the kills and I didn't know that going in, but once I got on the set, I realized it was not so much about the characters. It was about the suspense and the killing. So that was an yes. adjustment for me to realize. But I think killing. modern horror is learning now that developing the characters more makes those kills more impactful. I think back in the eighties, it was the body count, right? Like how many can we pop off in, yes. in a 90 yeah. minute film? Yes. I think yeah. it's better to have, developed characters and you feel them more you're more invested in in their safety and their life and you're upset when they get killed that wasn't quite the same in in a lot of the uh, no. earlier stuff so the, the, my no. problem with, and i know there's a lot of good stuff now but my problem with the present day horror is that it is too for me too graphic too exploitative um and I can't watch them. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fair. I, yeah. I tried to watch a, a film with my mother the other night, which was like, um, wasn't exactly a, a, a slasher or anything, but it had mm -hmm. elements to it. And she was just like, I don't enjoy this. I don't want to watch it. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, that's fair enough. Because, yeah, yeah the, the films of the past, like Exorcist, they really did rely on building tension rather than just Nothing throwing things at you. Nothing better than those films and the Hitchcock stuff. Nothing. Yes. You're speaking but my you know, language. There is a lot of, there's, a, there's a lot of love out there for Pam Roberts, though. So you've done your job well. Really? Because, oh, that's good to know. Oh, yeah. I often see, like, people will talk about, you know, they do the lists of their favorite final girls and, and things like that. And Pam's always up there. I think oh, good. as I lady years, people appreciate Part 5 more for the risk it took because at the time, I think, people wanted Jason mm -hmm. and they didn't appreciate the twist. Whereas now, you know, we've got plenty of Jason. Like that was something, they tried something new and it was interesting. Well, that's good. I, I think part five took a lot of heat. I think it should have been respected more for taking the chance and doing something different. Um, I started doing conventions, I think 10 years ago. And when I first went out, I took a lot of heat people said a lot of bad things and that they hated the movie and they hated me. And I said, look, I'm just an actor. Oh, God. Right to thank you. Yeah. Wow. But, uh, yeah, they just were unhappy with the, you no know, Jason. And so they took it out on us. But I think that it was a brave move for part five to try something different, mm -hmm. to go against formula. And whether it worked or not, see, I was supposed to do part six. They signed me to do five and six. And when yeah, so we realized, about that. yeah, when they realized five took backlash and it was, didn't work, they decided to scrap it and do a whole new part six. They had to pay me for it, but they were the part oh. six was going to be was going to be John Shepard and myself. The very final yep. scene on five, you see me and he's behind me with the knife. Part six yes. is going to start right there. But John Shepard decided that he did not want to do horror anymore. He didn't want to do any more Friday the 13th. So because John signed off, didn't want to do it, they couldn't bring me back alone. What I sh would have preferred they did was bring me back with a new Tommy. Right. But instead, it wouldn't Absolutely. Make I really think they missed the mark there because that's, as you were saying earlier, character development 
was not their big thing. And I think it would have paid off more. I mean, that, look, everyone talks about Tommy because he got three films. It would have been great to have Pam back. Mm-hmm. I think the only other final girl who ever got to appear again was Alice, uh-huh. and they popped her off in the opening scene. So I don't know if I was going to live in part six, but the script, <laughs> the script that I was given and what I was supposed to sign, I was signed on to do and what was supposed to happen was John Shepard and I were the story and John was the new da- Jason. He was the new killer. I, I mean, Tommy. Ooh. Yeah. So I yeah. thought it would have been very interesting. They got, they got nervous about the whole thing and scrapped it, but I think it would have been very good part six. In another universe, in another universe, who knows? You could yeah. <laughs> it could have taken you in a completely it would have been great to different have a direction. For the two parts, right. I think that that's the biggest problem. But so we want to talk a little bit about the shooting of this film. Um, we've talked uh, with with another Friday star before. Mm-hmm. How, how was and, and, and I know right? How dare you? We just like to collect our <laughs> scream queens. How was it? working on this set with uh, because i think by this time with by part five they have an idea of structure and how to get it done Mm -hmm. was it a fast pace like we've got to get we're going to get all in the bag and get it done quickly because it's a turnaround yes yeah Yeah. uh we shot for let me think six weeks i think i was there most of the time they shot it pretty quickly uh long hours it went from day shoots to night shoots, which means I would be shooting from like four or five in the afternoon to eight in the morning and then go home and sleep and start all over again. So it was a grueling schedule, but it was challenging and I loved it. I loved it. And did you get a chance to bond with your castmates? I mean, yes. we know yes. that you've got, you, you made some long friendships, but yes. I'm still I guess that share that off. shit. I bonded with Shavar Ross. I'm still friendly with him. Um, yeah, you guys have appeared together a lot as well, haven't you? Yes, yeah, so that, that's pretty cool. Really, that like he really was really little on the on the movie, and like now he's you've the gone into yeah. yeah. We uh, are <laughs> appearing together in Atlanta, Georgia, in three weeks, and yes. uh, there are going to be some others from Friday the Thirteenth. So we're having a little reunion, and it'll be fun. Part five, <laughs> yeah. So I'll see them. That's so I did cool. bond. I, do, I bonded with uh, Marco St. John. I bonded with obviously Sean uh, with um, John Shepard. Um, who else did I become? Mark Venturini, God rest his soul, was one of my friends there. Um, those are off the top of my head the people <laughs> that I really bonded with and became friends with. Uh, but it, I guess it's hard too because Pam was was very separate because mm-hmm. the one thing that I got, especially I rewatched this movie like literally last night. So it is fresh in my mind. You are not Pam is not the typical blonde scream queen. She comes in authoritatively straight away. You go, okay, this is different. And I like that about part five is mm-hmm. that we don't meet the teenagers first and mm-hmm. we, we kind of really get a sense of place and that it's going to be a different movie. Yeah. But, I, yeah, I, I would have liked more more time with Pam. And as you said, obviously there's stuff on the cutting room floor that we're never going to see, which we would have learnt more about her. Do you think that, that she was given a bit of a short shrift story-wise? I, I know that we've talked about it briefly, but... I think so, but I'm not upset. I understand they were clear to me that, yeah. look, it's a horror movie, it's a slasher film, and it's about the kills. You know, so yeah. I accepted it. At the time, I was like, oh, man, really? But I accepted it, and I accept it now. Did you sort of understand, by by that point in 85, like, the phenomenon of becoming a scream queen? Like, Jamie Lee had sort of established that. Did you realise that that's what you were going to be? Was No. no. <laughs> I had no idea. Um, I'm still shocked that it's that I'm a scream queen. I'm shocked <laughs> that I'm a final I didn't even know understand what final girl meant when I was doing it. So it's all been kind of a plus, um, a real thrill actually that I'm considered t- kind of like a pop 
pop icon. Pop culture <laughs> icon. Yeah, you're a pop culture yes. icon. And I think there's always a lot of love for the final girl, like especially like like Steve and I are both adult gay males. Like we mm-hmm. grew up loving the final girl. Like, you know, this was the girl who who kicked the bad guy's butts, you know, stood up to the bully. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I, I appreciate <laughs> it. it. I, I hear from fans uh, all the time telling me how that role uh, helped them get through some difficult times in their life growing up, in high school, junior high, bullied, you know, all these things. Some of my gay friends, you know, fans said when they were coming out, this kind of gave them courage and it shocks me that it had that impact, but I'm so thrilled that it did. I'm so thrilled. Well, I think it's, you've got, you've got to respect someone that faces, no matter like sexuality, bullying, any kind mm-hmm. of that, any of that thing. Horror is very cathartic because it's someone that faces the worst moment of their life and gets through it and fights tooth and nail to get through it on the other side of it. And that, you, you might not understand that as at when you're in the moment, but seeing that portrayed on screen and sitting there watching it and putting yourself in that place really does help people. And I'm glad that you can feel that and that people oh, are, are coming forward with it. I'm so thrilled that it had, that this silly little movie, and I know it's, has had <laughs> such a positive impact on some people's lives. And it was worth it. Yeah, you know? It's all it worth it. A, yeah. <laughs> wasn't just a privilege thing. Did you have to scream at the audition because you have a very impressive scream? No. No, I no. didn't. No, now that I think of it, no, I didn't. I had to, my audition was a an improv. It was in front of the whole Paramount oh, wow. staff and the casting and the director, Danny Steinman. And they said, we need you to do an improv where you're being murdered. Go. Oh, God. Oh, okay. So oh, wow. Room, I left the room for a few minutes. Maybe I was going to say, there's not many experiences you can draw on to know how that feels, so right? Three minutes, I went I, I kicked open the door and I came in and I, I went through a murder. And I <laughs> must have done well because when I finished, I remember being on the floor and I looked at the table of people, producers and everything, and their jaws were open. They looked stunned, and I thought, "Okay, well, this either went really well or really bad," and they um, they applauded. So, but you know that moment you, as a, as a dancer and as a theater actor, you know that moment of silence is something's gone really, really well, yeah. or something's gone horribly wrong, and that's part of the yeah. that's part of the adrenaline. You go, yeah. "Did yeah. I just do an amazing job?" Yeah, yeah. and so. <laughs> When I, they said, thank you very much. We talked briefly. Uh, I think Danny Steinman asked me a few questions. And then I left. And two hours later, they called me. Told me wow. That never happened. You must have. A bunch of no, people. that's. Two hours later. They probably just waiting for you to get home so they could call you. Yeah, so that's what I, I, back in the day. I left the audition at four in the afternoon. And they called me about 630. Yeah. So what's that feeling like? What What's that feeling like being, you know, doing bits and pieces of TV and then going, oh, holy crap. I was My stunned. life changed in two hours. I was stunned. <laughs> I was stunned. And then reality <laughs> set in. And I said, my God, I got this role. I have the lead in this. Um, no, it was a, it, talk about adrenaline. It was a, it was life changing, actually. That's that's dreams come true moment that yes. you know that's yeah. the, what you live for and it, it actually work. happened. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, until forty years later. Yeah. <laughs> until forty years later. Now years. the what the the last question I have to ask okay. about your your time. <laughs> Do you have PTSD over rain? Because you spent a lot of time in that rain machine. <laughs> I think I would, but I don't. No, that rain machine was brutal. It was more the temperature. They made the water really really cold. And it was very oh, no. so it was that was the hardest part. The temperature, the temperature of the water, and the long yeah. hours of doing it over and over and over. I was gonna say it would almost send you into de- de- delirium almost. The kind of pain was so believable at the end. She was you were you were done. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it helped with the act too, I gotta tell you. 
<laughs> well, as I have to say, you must understand what Leonardo and Kate, Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet went through on Titanic, yeah. freezing cold water. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it helped. It, you know, I didn't think about it at the time, but then I got into it and I said, okay, this this is working. The falling in the mud and all this, that, it helped. And you yeah. did all that yourself? You, all you did stuff. the running, the all falling, all, all that kind of, of stuff? All of it, baby. You wouldn't get that this day and age, would you? Like you would get someone else is going to fall over for you just in case you hurt your whatever. No, they don't care. Like, uh, no. They didn't care. Run a, do it. Yeah, no, run around in the forest. Go yeah. off your pop. Well, she, she hurt herself. You can change the Melanie. Mm -hmm. No, no, they didn't care. Yeah, what about the chainsaw? Was that was that just a prop prop or was no, it no, no, part that real? Was it real. We had to we had to rehearse with that with the stunt people because they said we want to make sure you don't uh, uh kill yourself <laughs> no they were more concerned about what i was going to do to tom morgan who played the jason character they said we don't want you to shut you know sh shave his arm off or something so they were very because i throw the chainsaw at him and it was a working you chainsaw it, it, when you picked it up it oh was about 50 pounds anyway and then when they got it uh, turned it on the thing vibrates so it's like a hundred pounds <laughs> And I only weighed 100 pounds. So this thing was very heavy. Rocking your so world. They wanted, wanted to make sure that I didn't injure the other actor. So there was a lot of rehearsal. But that's my favorite that, scene. That's craziness. You, you would never get away with, insurance-wise, you would never get away with something like that these days. Yeah. It's like, I was say, they should have credited you as a stunt actress as well. Don't you think? Yes. Yeah. I know Sharon Stone. I think she demanded that she was a stunt actress because she had to fight Arnold Schwarzenegger in Total Recall. She's yeah. like, "Give me the shirt." <laughs> no, that would have been. That is. Yeah, you live and learn. Yeah, I should have right. done I didn't demand. <laughs> well, you, you it was your first movie. You're like, I'm just yeah. happy to be here. Happy there to be you here. go. <laughs> Yeah. What do you want, you want me to do? You want me to clean? I'll do something. Yeah. What do you want me to do? I'm here. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Luke started to I cut him off before, but we've got to we've got to ask the question with you know reboots and big nostalgia energy being very very popular at the moment. Crystal Lake, the TV series, has been greenlit. It's going ahead. It is happening. If they reach out, this is, I, I always like to do this and put an idea out into the universe because I think mm -hmm. if it's out there, it has more of a chance of manifesting. Okay. I think they should get the final girls back in Crystal Lake, the TV series, as yeah. characters. Not necessarily their own characters, but right. someone else. Would you return? Would you go uh, back to camp? Absolutely. Yes, okay. <laughs> there you go. You've heard it here first, Hollywood. <laughs> absolutely. Yep. yep. Especially Would you like, like to play Ethel. someone like Ethel? Hi, don't you look lovely today? Poor shit. <laughs> I'll play <No>. you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I know, but would you like to, yes, would you go would. Some, like, like completely it. against type? Absolutely. Yeah, get like. That's the most fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Yeah. It's fun. But would you, would you reprise Pam again as well, though? If the offer was there, yeah. you would. Yeah. Excellent. And I, I really do think there needs to be some closure to the final girls because mm -hmm. it, I think they did a great job with what they did with Halloween as showing, you know, the long-term effects of an event like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah. I think they should bring us back. I mean, Me too. I think especially, especially with the success of, as Luke said, Halloween, yeah. but more recently Scream, Chucky, if they could make those child's play movies come together I mean, into one story I mean, and be a successful TV show, I mean, yeah, anything is possible. Anything is possible. So, We're putting it out there. We are. Out Ooh. into the universe. In, into the universe. <laughs> now, I have I have some questions because you, you've gone back – a horror slash mockumentary recently. Oh yeah, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk about the once and future smash. Yes, um, it, it's it's good. It's interesting. Um, I'm. I can't tell you what I did in it, but I have some very funny lines. So you yeah. get to do comedy. It's, yeah, it's a comedy. Refreshing. 
Is that refreshing yes. for you? Yes. Not screaming yeah. and running around? Yes. Well, you did actually, jumping back, Melanie, when you were back in New York, you did an episode of Saturday Night Live, didn't you? Yes, I did. It was one of my favorites. Yes, the musical guests were the Rolling Stones. I was on Shut that. up. Yes. <laughs> You were living your best life back there, girl. You were oh, going yeah. for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a great episode. Uh, I got to work with Gilda Radner, Belushi, everybody. Oh. everybody. And I, it was a, 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 a spoof on Charlie's Angels, and I played Cheryl Ladd. <laughs> and, 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 and Charlie was played by Belushi, so, yeah. That's amazing. Are you Look, are you writing a book? I think, oh, I think you got oh, some stories yeah. to tell. No, yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, there's so many stories that I'm sure we're just scratching the surface as well. There's got to be, there's got to be so much more. So you've already yeah. told us about an upcoming, an upcoming project. What else mm-hmm. is on the horizon for you besides conventions and stuff? Let no, us I, know. I don't know. I think that's it. That's all I got right now. I, I, you know, that's all you got. That's pretty good though. <laughs> the thing and, and I'm hoping to get other stuff and maybe Friday the 13th will call me and, um, that's it. Making convention appearances when I can. And uh, I'll keep you guys all posted what's coming up and hopefully a lot of things. Has the convention vibe changed? Are you, fi- are you finding now that with COVID and coming out of that and you it's said you got, a, you got a bit of a hard rap? You got a bit of a hard rap to start with? Are yeah. people coming around now? Do you feel yes, the love? It's getting much better. It's getting <laughs> back to where it was, and that's a good thing. It that's, took three years, pretty much, but it's, it's amazing. It's so, you know, God bless them. That is what it is. It is what it is, isn't it? <laughs> we all need a break the COVID thing. We all suffered. So I wish everybody the best coming out of that. Yeah. Well, it has been such a pleasure chatting to you. We, are, I can't wait to find out more about this big epic next role for you it's going to be exciting to watch um we are we are so thrilled that you spent some time with us today and we look hopefully we have manifested a return to crystal lake for you as well wouldn't that be great thank you would that be great if it if it happens you gotta get you gotta let us know you gotta be like i'm telling you everything I was going to say, I'll be blowing up your, your messenger, girl. It'll be all right. I'm going to be telling you everything. Yes. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Miss Melody Kidman. We will see you soon on Uncensored so. Radio. <laughs> thank you.